Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, starring Jason Hughes as Alex. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgi, and Din. Din being really Din. And we sat in the Corova milk bar, making up our Sudox what to do with the evening. A flip, dark, chill winter bastard, though dry. What's it going to be then? Hey? What's it going to be then? Hey? What's it going to be then? Hey! Tall chucking, dratsing, and kicks in the yard blockers. Thumps on the Gulliver. Fists in the plot. Grunky great shoes. To the Bratified Millicent. Viddy and the Kami. Or out of his rot. The titters and genus and sorry babushkas are cracking the kishkas. We are a show hot. Give it them, whether they want it or not. The Corova Milk Bar was a milk plus mesto, and what they sold there was milk plus something else. You could peat it with Valaset or Synthamask, or Drenkrom, which would give you a nice, quiet, horror show 15 minutes. Aristotle wishy-washy works out in to come and get four feculate smarties. <laughs> and a shine, shine. No, anti-penultimate, you gross bladder egg follicles. In the land, in orbit, stoned into a balloon. <laughs> Alone with Bog and all his holy angels and saints. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very nice, but very, like, cowardly. <laughs> you are not put on this earth just to get into touch with Bog. Oh, no. That sort of thing can sap all the strength and goodness out of a malchick. No, no, I'm afraid not. In, in unfrelicated arbuckles. <laughs> no, the neck gronobated urchins. Frolicking in, in left, right, front, <laughs> back, ill for coons. work. <laughs> or you could peat milk with knives in it, as we used to say. And that was what we were peating this evening. I'm starting off the story with. What's it going to be then? Hey! Then in our car, and so no need for classic and making the golly bird cough up its guts. Roll chops and twenty to one in an alleyway. Rookers for fisting and brickers for cuts. What's it going to be then? Eh? As one door closes, another one shuts. Cover it, horror show. But me no buts. length of Uzi or chain on his waist, twice wound round, and he unwound this and began to swing it beautiful in the eyes or glazies. Pete and Georgi had good sharp nudges, but I, for my own part, had a fine, starry, horror show, cutthroat Britva. <laughs> Pity yourself, oh dim. 
Your platy's a grassy mess and red, red crovy on your lid, so. That I like not. I don't like us, I care not, bratty. Profound shoes of lip music to the year nine. <laughs> Coverite not thus wise, O oh, Dim, to him that is your rightful leader. Yabbles! Balshi, great yablock! Oh, hey! What's this of a leader? You Alexander the Balshi, then? We Coverite not before of a leader. Yeah. It was all for one before and all droogs together, right? Yeah. Righty right! Oh, very much righty right. Wrong, Pete. Wrong, Gail. There's got to be someone in charge. Who do you see? Him? Dim the Dim? Or me? Alex the Large. There's those that come right for the job. Some are like scum. You? You won't do. Pete Stump, Georgie's a slob. Don't cover it to Slovo. You and you. Not one shoe from your rot. You pony that is Pravda. Pravda. True. Isn't it? Not. There's some get born horned like a ram. Who blows the horn? Me. Me. Not he. Or thou or thee. You little Sean Lamb. I am the bullshit, big, big, bold. I am. Come, come along, my dear. Do hurry. A real dobby evening to thee and thine, O oh brother and sister. Ah, real horror show, Ochkin. <laughs> <laughs> my glasses. <laughs> Never fear, I fear thou hast in thy heart, O oh brother. Pray banish it forthwith. What is this? What is it? A book! It's a book what you have written of. I have ever had the most presumably admiration for them as can write books, brother. And the name is Alexander, the same as mine. There's a coincidence. A clockwork orange. A fair gloopy title. Who ever heard of a clockwork orange? <laughs> <laughs> the attempt to impose upon man a creature of growth and capable of sweetness throws <laughs> juicily at the last round the bearded lips of God <laughs> to attempt to impose, I say, laws and conditions appropriate only to a mechanical creation. <laughs> Against this I raise my sword. <laughs> 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 And shagged and fashed and bashed. To 
thy sacred shrine we come. Customs bond no more can sever those by thy sure magic tide. All mankind are loving brothers where thy sacred wings abide. Joy the glorious spark of heaven. Off with that cow, Dim. This is like a real music. Filthy, drooling, mannerless, bust! Move! Little Alex, yes? Sick this morning, so no school. Sick tomorrow morning too, so the same, yes? But very fit and well in the night, yes? Mr. Deltoid, sir. I am surprised to see you in a mesto of this, like, depravity. Depravity, eh? To me, it looks very much like a harmless milk bar. But I hear that the white milk can be a harmless wrapper for certain drugs, such as Drencrom, Veloset, and the like, yes? Terrible, sir. Drugs, sir, can sap all the strength and goodness out of a malchick. Them I touch not. Oh, no, verily not. Oh, yes. Have to keep up our strength and badness to indulge in crimes of the night, don't we? I and my friends create. We are here to quench our wholesome thirst after an evening's music. But you destroy, don't you? Destroy, yes. Break, steal, commit mayhem, slash. Soon you will kill, yes? Never, sir. Never not. Life is like sacred, Mr. Deltoid, sir. This I say to you, little Alex. The next time it will not be the corrective school. Next time it will be the Barry Hole. All my work ruined. My prospect of promotion frustrated. Remember that, yes? And I will not speak up for you. Oh, no. I will say that you are villainy incarnate. I will say that you are original sin prowling the town. I will sing loud and clear. And what gets into you all? Theological evil. And the devil stalking the street. The weevil in the flower of life, I repeat. What gets into you all? Nobody's got nothing on me, sir. I've been out of the rookers of the Millicents for a long time now. That's just what worries me. A bit too long of a time to be healthy. You're about due now, by my reckoning. That's why I'm warning you, little Alex, to keep your handsome young proboscis out of the dirt, yes? Do I make myself clear? As an unmuddied lake, sir. Clear as an azure sky of deepest summer. What gets into you all? What gets into us all? Theological evil. Theological evil. The devil stalking the street. The devil stalking the street. The weevil in the flower of life. The weevil in the flower of life. I repeat, don't repeat. What gets into us all? Let me explain to you, all my brothers, as for him and the others, it's no good saying a word to them. It's never occurred to them that energy is something built into a boy. But neither the church nor the state has taught us how to create. So we've got to use energy to destroy. Destructions are owed to joy. Are owed to joy. What gets into you all? Is it biological drivel? It's unambivalent sin. It's the devil grinning within. God help us all. God help us all. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Mr. Deltoitzer. Yes, Mr. Deltoitzer. Alex, the not so large. You shouldn't have done what you've done to me, Brad. That tall jock in the kiskas. Not having that damn yet. And I felt the Britva go just deep enough in the meat of old Dim's wrist. And he dropped his shaking Uzi, yelping like a little child. Anybody else interested in a bit of filling? <laughs> eh? Good. Dobby. Righty right. We proceed, under the like leadership of your little droog Alex, to the next vestige of the Notchy. Right, Dim. Right, Georgi. Righty right, oh Peter of my heart. Right. right. There you are, my dears. Mm. I know what you want. Milky. <laughs> what is it? Who is it? An accident, madam. My friend has just been knocked down by a bus. Oh, please let me in to telephone for an ambulance. Uh, please. Please. Please, he, he's like dying. Oh. I know your tricks, boy. Oh. Smelly little bed bugs. Coming to make trouble for real people. Be off with you, or I'll ring for the police. Oh. Oh. No phoning tonight, missus. I have taken the inestimable and detestable trouble of cutting the phone off. See, with my little Britva. Out of here. I've had too much of it. First one war, and then another war with the bombs dropping. I won't have you as well. I die peaceful. Die in your own good time, you grasny, starry forella. All I desire is like share and share alike, like. Me and my droogs have a melanky dollop of Nichivo. Jobless? Ah, yes. Not one lump tick of dang in our empty carmens. You and yours have built the Grazny world we like living, so now you pay. Yes, yes, pay. And then I saw the loveliest Malenki Vesch any Malchik fond of music like myself could ever hope to vidi with his own two glazies. For it was like the Gulliver and Plechos of Ludwig van himself, what they call a bust. Ah! Ludwig van, that I love. Lovely, lovely, and all for me. With that, I start. No, you don't! Ah. Not having that, we're not. Ah, no. So I upped with the statue and cracked her a fine, fair tolchuk on the Gulliver, and that shut her up a real horror show. <laughs> Right, what you did, little bratty. Oh, no. Just time, yeah. just time to make like our Indian yeah. off. The yeah. others are on their way. Yeah. Yeah? Dim? And then I vidied that he had his Uzi out and he chained me gentle and artistic like on the glass lids, me just closing them up in time. Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Deltoid, sir, help me. You're my friend, sir, Mr. Deltoid. Well, well, if it isn't little Alex, all to our own selves. I did nothing. It was my treacherous droogs. They, like, framed me, brothers. Knocked out this old Forella, and then me. The pain in my glasses is killing. A real pleasure, this is. Not often we has the, like, privilege. <clears throat> I blame bog bust and bleed you, you grasny bastards. Language, language. <clears throat> bog murder you, you funny stinking bratsneys. Where are the others? Where are my stinking traitorous droogs? It was all their idea, brothers. They're like, forced me to do it. I'm innocent, bog butcher you. 
I think she's at it. Can't be sure, need the doctor. Phone from the car. Right. Evening, Mr. Deltoid. He must be a big disappointment to you. Evening, evening, yes. So, it's happened, Alex, boy, yes. Just as I thought it would. Dear, dear, yes. So now he gets out of my soft probationary gloves into the calloused paws of the law. Yes, well, this is the end of the line for me, yes. I suppose I'll have to be in court tomorrow. It wasn't me, sir, brother. Speak up for me, sir, for I'm not so bad. I was led on by the treachery of the others, sir. <laughs> Sings like a linnet. Sings the roof off lovely, does that? I'll speak. I'll be there tomorrow, yes. Fear not. If you'd like to give him a bash in the chop, sir, don't mind me. Here's the doctor now. Evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. That was real horror show. Did my hurt glazies a lot of, like, good, sir? Like the spit of the bearded vec that they hung on the cross on the halt and the leg. All right! Tonight, you can have it all! A signed confession. Right, right, right. I'm not going to crawl around no more, you mersky debt. You can have it all. Dratzing and filling and doll chocking and the old in out. The lot. It looks like you can add a new one to that list. Stuffed it, is she, Doc? Well, well, real horror show. Horror show is right. And me only just gone 14. What's it going to be then, eh? Is it going to be in and out and in and out of penal institutions? Though more in than out for most of you. Or are you going to attend to the divine word and realize the punishments that await the unrepentant sinner in the next world as well as in this? A lot of blasted idiots you are, selling your birthright for a saucer of cold porridge. The thrill of theft, of violence, the urge to live easy. Is it worth it when we have proof, undeniable proof, incontrovertible evidence that hell exists? I know, I know, my friends. I have been informed in visions that there is a place darker than any prison, hotter than any flame of human fire, where souls of unrepentant sinners like yourselves don't leer at me, damn you! Don't laugh! <laughs> like yourselves, I say. I scream in endless and intolerable agony. Their noses choked with the stink of filth. Their mouths crammed with burning order. Their skin rotting and peeling. A, a, a fireball spinning in their screaming guts. Yes, yes, I know, I know. <coughs> Remember. Now go. And may the Holy Trinity keep you always and make you good. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, as always, little double six, double five, three, two, one. The music you chose was, as always, admirable. Taste is a great thing. It leads one to the beautiful. And beauty, with truth and goodness, 
is one of the attributes of God. Music is heaven, sir, I see that. Beyond this horrible world of evil, I do so want goodness too, and that's the truth. The truth is in that holy book you handle, little double six, double five, three, two, one. I am overjoyed that you read it. There is a text I would in particular ask you to ponder on. I see you read the Old Testament more than the New. But it's in the New that the word of the Lord most scintillantly shines. Too much govery in and preacher fine, sir. What's that, boy? I love the preacher fine, sir. I see you made notes here. What does this say? Page 368. Your hoodies tall chocking each other, a real horror show, and then wiping off the red, red crovey and spatting with their like handmaidens and peating the old vino. What's all this blasphemy about? That was already in it when I got it, sir. Terrible. Wish I like understood it. I would like to be dressed in the height of like Roman fashion and tall chock the bearded Nagoy Vec all the way to his crucifixion. Corruption. Corruption. I must give you another copy. There are plenty around. Sir, I've tried to be good, haven't I, sir? I've done my best, isn't that so? All of the two years I've been in, sir. Go on as you are, little double six, double five, three, two, one, and you will probably earn your remission. But, sir, how about this new thing they're all talking about? How about this new, like, treatment that gets you out in no time at all and makes sure that you never get back in again? Where did you hear this? Who's been telling you these things? <sighs> Bit of old newspaper gets blown in on the wind, or two warders talk, as it might be. It's called the something or other what's it, sir. A lot of eco technique. Yes, sir. Uh, of course, it's only in the experimental stage at the moment. It, it, it's very simple, but very drastic. But it's being used here, isn't it, sir? Those new, like, white buildings by the south wall. We've watched those being built while we're doing our, like, exercise. Sir, that is. It's not being used yet. Not in this prison, double six, double five, three, two, one. Himself, uh, the governor, that is, he, he has grave doubts about it, and I must confess I share those doubts. The question is whether such a technique can make a man good. Now, goodness comes from within, double six, double five, three, two, one. Goodness is something chosen. When a man cannot choose, he ceases to be a man. Detail for chapel cleaning, all present and correct, sir. Very well. <sighs> Think on these things, little double six, double five, three, two, one. Right, you look, get down to it. You, nine two oh five seven three. You're new here. I want to see work. This is only the chapel, but I want to see it as clean as if it was the governor's toilet. Right? Right, you see. But I want rights. Done more parties than any of this lot, and I know what's what. It's four to a cell, that's regulations, and it's six in hours. I have to sleep on a bleeding floor. When that kid there has a bunk to himself, I demand my sod in rights. Oh, right, is it? All the prisons is the same, and it's you criminal bastards as is responsible. Criminals? There's no one proper sod in criminal among a lot of them. That kid there, and he's a pox doctor, and this one's on the con. I'm not having it. I demand my bleeding rights. Oh, he wants his rights, lads. I'm just having a drag in that bog there. I think five minutes ought to do it. Right. Do with you. What can they do with you? Use you 
for swapping the floor. You're going to college to get some knowledge on how to behave and how. And so here comes discipline. 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 For him like that, Alex, my boy. It was most ill advised. I could see from the colour of his lips that he had an art condition. Uh, me? I hardly touched a bratchney. You went backward and putting it in, Doc. What are you all videoing me like that for? Alex, you were too impetuous. That last kick was a very, very nasty one. Mm, yeah. Nobody will deny having a little kick at the man no, to teach no, him a no. salutary lesson, so well, to indeed, speak, but. Uh, it's apparent that you, my dear boy, with the forcefulness and, 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 and shall I say, heedlessness of youth, yeah. dealt him the coup de grace. Mm. It's a great pity. Yeah. Traitors! Ooh. Traitors and liars! Yeah. Is the whole world full of nothing but liars and treacherous, brutal vex that call themselves droogs? Bug blast you, I'll have the lot of you! Where's our bleeding chasso as a like witness? <laughs> It's the governor and some big bugger coming. Special inspection and not one word of bleeding warning, Jesus! Hey, you! Get up! He can't. He's like snuffed it. These bratchneys here tall chopped him real brutal and nasty. <sighs> dear, 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 Alex, the truth and youth do not go well together, do they? Prop him up, quick! Son! <laughs> What's the matter with that man? A asleep on his feet, sir. He has no bunk. A common complaint in this prison, if I may say so. Overcrowding is an endemic problem. You shut your all when the governor speaks to you. Well, that's the horse's mouth. The situation is appalling. As he says, an endemic problem. Overcrowding. Common criminals are preempting the space we may soon require for political offenders. Well, Gibson, you know the solution. I have my doubts, Minister. The technique is hardly sufficiently advanced to justify the use of this prison as a... See, as a trailblazer. But there are certain urgencies. Political urgencies, to be candid. And I have every confidence in Dr. Brodsky. Common criminals like this unsavoury crowd can best be dealt with on a purely curative basis. Kill the criminal reflex. No more than that. Full implementation in a year's time. That's the government's policy. Punishment means nothing to them. You can see that. They enjoy their so-called punishment. They start murdering each other. Too right. <sighs> yes, well, exactly. With respect, sir, I object very strongly to what you governorated just then. I am not a common criminal, sir, and I am not like unsavoury. The others may be unsavoury, but I am not. You shut your bleeding hole, you. This is the Minister of the Inferior. Interior. All right, you can start with him. Yes, he's young, bold, vicious. Brodsky will deal with him. Gibson, you can sit in and watch. That works all right, don't worry about that. This vicious young hoodlum will be transformed out of all recognition. Tell him about it, would you? Procure the uh, requisite documentation. You may as well start now. Right, I think these creatures can go back to their cells. And uh, this one, of course, may be delivered to the morgue. Well, if there's room. Come, Geoffrey. Cyril. Knock at the chaplain's door on the way and tell him to come here. Sir. Right. Off you lot. You boy are to be reformed. What's your name? Double six, double five, three, two, one, sir. Well, double six, double five, three, two, one. You are to go to the famous Dr. Brodsky. It is believed that you will be able to leave state custody in a little over two weeks. You'll be free again. No longer a number. Does that prospect please you? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I've done my best here. Really, I have. 
I'm very grateful to all concerned. Don't be. This is not a reward. This is far from being a reward. Ah. Uh, Chaplin. He's to be given the Lodovico technique. Orders of the Minister of the Interior. God help us. So, you are to be made into a good boy, little double six, double five, three, two, one. Never again will you have the desire to commit acts of violence or offend in any way whatsoever against the state's peace. I hope you take all that in. I hope you're absolutely clear in your own mind about that. Oh, it would be so nice to be good, sir. It may not be nice to be good, double six, double five, three, two, one. It may be horrible to be good. I know I shall have many sleepless nights about this. What does God want? Does God want goodness or the choice of goodness? Is a man who chooses the bad perhaps in, in some way better than a man who has the good imposed upon him? You're passing now to a region where you will be beyond the power of prayer. A terrible, terrible thing to consider. And yet, in a sense, in choosing to be deprived of the ability to make an ethical choice, you have, in a sense, really chosen the good. So I shall like to think. So, God help us all, double six, double five, three, two, one. I shall like to think. <laughs> God works in a mysterious way His wonders to perform Free, free, free Soon he'll be free Free, free, free Soon he'll be free Soon just a fortnight so He knows he's going to be free Free, free, free as a free Soon for a or free as the sea, or a chestnut tree, free, 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 he will soon be free, he is you and me, if we're truly free, it's the thing that we always want to be, in just a fortnight or so, he knows he's going to be free, free as a bee, or a flower of bee, free as the sea, or a chestnut tree, free, 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 you will soon be free, be as you and me. If we're truly free, it's a thing that we always want to be. In just a fortnight, so he knows he's going to be free. Free as a bee, or a fly or bee. Free as the sea, or a chestnut tree. Be free, free, free. You will soon be free, be as you and me. If we're truly free, it's a thing that we. Morning, all. What was that stuff they shoved in my arm after breakfast? You enjoyed your breakfast, Alex. Oh, yes, sir. Eggy wags and lump ticks of spick and the old Monaco. It was a real horror show. But what was that? Uh, uh, vitamins, my boy. You're a little undernourished. Prison diet never did anyone any good. Now, sit here. What are you going to do to me, sir? Uh, you're going to watch some films. And we have dials which will record your reactions to them. Films? You mean like the cine? What's these things on my glasses for, then? Uh, the lid locks will make sure you look. 
Once close your eyes and the machine fails to register. But I love the movie, sir. Films are a real horror show. I want a video. Uh, there's just a possibility that you may, well... <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, see being the operative word. His slang, where does he get it from? It's uh, Russian and English getting together to make an international teenage patois. Nasat is the Russian suffix for teen. It's called Nasat. The two major political languages of the world reduced to an unpolitical yeah, yeah, Yes, 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 yes. I think we're ready. Lights. Start. A typical street scene of our time. Vicious teenage hoodlums beating up an old woman. See the blood? It splashes the camera lens. Hear the crack of bones breaking. Now the scene changes. The girl on the pavement is only ten. The assailants are four in number. The rape is brutal. At the end of it, she becomes a thing disposable to pieces. A gunshot up her... No, no, no! No? But this is the sort of thing you like, you and your generation. The reaction, 8.7, it's not bad. Now, the scene changes once more. A Japanese prisoner of war camp in World War II. Torture. A sharp knife disembowels a prisoner live. Now, see... A decapitation. Head off. As clean as a whistle, see? Headless though he is, the dead man runs around for a short while in total nervous automatism. No, no, no! I will be sick! 10.45, a remarkably rapid reaction. All right, yes, net lights, lights, no, bring him a kidney bowl, ice cold water. So then, you're reacting as a normal human being should. Violence is nauseating, and you're, well, you're nauseated, aren't you? <coughs> Flowing in your veins is a chemical <coughs> substance patented by the late Dr. Lodovico. Dr. Lodovico ended his days, alas, as a terminal victim of adolescent mayhem, but his invention marches on. <sighs> so, it wasn't, like... Vitamins. No, it wasn't like vitamins. I'm cured. Let me out of here. I feel it all clear as the morning daylight now. It's wrong, wrong and very wrong. Filling and crasting and tall chucking in the old inn out. I've learned my lesson. I don't need any more. But the lesson's only just begun. Lights. Oh. Now we see a Nazi concentration camp in which selected Jewish subjects are castrated. Oh. Without anaesthetic, of course. What's it going to be then? A. What's it going to be then? A. It's all chopping. Drastic. In the yard block host Thumps on the caliber Fists in the plot Crosby great tunes To the ratified Millicent Billy the crummy Worn out of his rot Jesus and Chinas and Sorry the bushes A crack in the kishes Real hard so hot Did it then Whether they want it Or not Here we see some very recent film, a riot in London's East End, with the police as much responsible for the enormities enacted as the black, brown and white disaffected. Corpses in the gutter. Corpses hanging from lampposts. A torn and eviscerated dying. This is the modern world.
Sick, sick, mortally sick. How like a god, said Hamlet, to humankind. Better to say, how like a dog. A dog, as Pavlov showed, can at least be conditioned by the control of its reflexes into behaving like a harmless machine. If mankind is to be saved, science must take over. Science must dig its way into the human brain, crushing the instinct of aggression. All right, all right! But leave him alone! He did no harm! He only did good! It's a sin! It's a sin, I tell you! He's painted. Lights! Lights! Switch off! Alex. Alex, wake up. Alex, sip some water. <coughs> he did no harm. Why'd you punish him? Who? Beethoven. He gave heaven and you turned it into hell. I don't think I quite understand. That was Beethoven on the soundtrack. The scherzo of the Ninth Symphony. Was it? I know nothing about music. I just find it a convenient heightener of emotion, no more. But surely you see what we've done. Pavlov's dogs salivated when they saw food and heard a bell. Then they salivated when they merely heard a bell. Withdraw the images of violence while keeping the musical accompaniment. He'll respond in the same way. But not to salivating, of course. Vomiting. From now on... Music will make him vomit. Did you foresee this? No, but does it matter? Music's a discardable luxury, like marijuana or cheap sweets. It's the quelling of the violent impulse that matters. I think he's cured. No. We've given him a new disease. Music was once the way into heaven. He used the right words. Now it's going to be hell. I think, Dr Brodsky, I want to withdraw from the experiment. I'd be happy if you'd omit my name from the reports. You've bitten off far, far more than you can chew. You feel all right now? Well, have you noticed a small but vital change in procedure these last few days? You've not been giving me those injections? No. There's no need for them anymore. You've been permanently inoculated. The distaste for violence has been programmed into your biochemistry. My forecast has proved correct to the day, to the minute. Take him away. Inform the distinguished gentleman. Oh, and, uh, yes, of course, uh, the professional participants, that all is ready. I expected that I would be ittying as usual to the cine mesto in my pyjamas. But no. Uh, take your seats, please. No noise. Uh, do try not to cough. With some pride, government presents the end result of government's experiments. They said that I'm to concentrate on the crime rate. On the crime rate. I'm only here to serve. I steeled my nerve with what results you'll observe. Let us observe. Give us the votes we deserve. We will vote you back in like responsive adults when we see yes when we see yes yes positive results aha uh -huh. <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen we introduce the subject himself today we sent him with confidence out into the world again as decent a lad as you would meet on a may morning Inclined to the kindly word and the helpful act. What a change is here from the wretched hoodlum the state committed to unprofitable punishment some two years ago. Unchanged after two years. Unchanged, do I say. 
Not quite. Prison taught him the false smile, the rubbed hands of hypocrisy, the fawning, greased, obsequious leer. Other vices it taught him too, as well as confirming him in those he had long practiced before. But, ladies and gentlemen, enough of words. Actions speak louder than. Action now. Observe all. <laughs> Hello, heap of dirt. Oh, you don't wash much, do you? Judging from the horrible pong. <laughs> then he stamped on my nogas, left, right, gave me a fingernail flick on the nose that hurt like bazoomni and brought the old tears to my glazies. Then he twisted at my left uko like it was a radio dial. What did you do that to me for, bratty? I've never done like wrong to you, brother. Oh, oh I do this. Ow! Oh, and that. And those. <laughs> Because I don't care for your horrible type, and if you want to do something about it, please do. No. No. I'd like to give you a ciggy, brother, but I don't seem to have any. Take this instead, a real horror show brick, brother. Oh, keep your stinking bribes to yourself. You can't get around me that way. Please! Brother, I must do something. Yeah. Shall I clean your boots? Look, I'm going down and do it my yatsy. But all this Vec did was to kick me not too hard on the rock. So it seemed to me that it would not bring on the sickness and pain if I just gripped his ankles with my rookers and brought this grasny bratchny down to the floor. But... Thank you. That will do very well. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Brodsky. Well, our subject is, you see, impelled toward the good by paradoxically being impelled towards evil. The intention to act violently is accompanied by strong feelings of physical distress. Now, to counter these, the subject has to switch to a diametrically opposed attitude. Any questions? Choice. He has no real choice, has he? Self-interest, fear of physical pain drove him into that grotesque act of self-abasement. Its insincerity was clearly to be seen. He ceases to be a wrongdoer. He ceases also to be a creature capable of moral choice. No, no, these, these are subtleties. We're not concerned with the higher ethics. We're concerned only with cutting down crime. And with relieving the ghastly congestion in our prisons. Hear, hear. Hear, hear. It's an experiment that really seems to work It's quite amazing all the elements that lurk Below the surface dedicated to destroy Can be subdued, it's quite essential to employ This new device to keep the social structure pure of criminality and so help to secure a glowing future in which villainy will see a tale for kids or else a memory of a dream me 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 how about me where do i come into all this am i just like some animal or dog am i to be just like a clockwork orange you have no cause to grumble boy whatever now ensues is what you yourself have chosen Oh, if only I could believe that. He's been transformed into a mere engine, fueled by fear, incapable of hate, choice, worship, or even human love. Uh, yes, I, I am glad this question of love has been raised. Uh, now we shall see in action a manner of love that was thought to be dead with the Middle Ages. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful and beauteous of Dvochkas. I like throw my ticker at your feet for you to like trample over. 
If I had a red, red rose, I would give it to you. If it was all rainy and cali, you could have my platies to walk on so, so not to cover your dating logos with filth and cow. <laughs> Let me worship you and be like your helper and protector from the wicked like bull. Let me be like your true knight. <laughs> he will be your true Christian. Ready to turn the other cheek, ready to be crucified rather than crucify. Sick to the very heart at the thought even of Killing a fly. <laughs> Let the heavens rejoice at his comforting voice. We destroyed, overjoyed, liberty of choice. The point is that it works. Oh, it works all right. <laughs> God help the lot of us. What do you want here, then? Olivia. I've got no key, though. Waiting, you know, for my dad and my mum, or both. Coming home from work, you know. Yeah. Seen you somewhere before. Wait. That you? Got cured of your criminality, it says here. Read that when I see you. Well, 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 well. Got a famous criminal living here, have we? Hey, we've only just moved in here, but we know our rights. One wrong move out of you, and I'm ready with that dustbin lid there. Got it! Mum! Oh, no. You've escaped. Oh, Joe, he's jumped over the wall. Get away. You're not supposed to be here. We've had enough trouble. Go on. Off. They let me out, Mum. This afternoon. It was in the papers. Didn't you see? Your dad doesn't like me to see the paper. Too much sex and rubbish, he says. So, they've let you out. What are you going to do now? Come home, Mum, first. I mean, that's where I live. Sort of. Who's this, then? Joe. The lodger. He's got you a room. We didn't think we'd be having you home for another eight years or so. Well, he'd better get out and give me back, then, hadn't he? <laughs> oh, disgusting. <laughs> so... This is him. Heard all about you, boy. I know what you've done, breaking the hearts of your poor, grieving parents. So you're back, huh? Back to make life a misery for them all over again, is that it? Over my dead corpse, you will. Because they've let me be more like a son to them than a lodger. So get cleared off and leave us in peace. Like what she deserves after all she's gone through. You... You filthy young swine. <coughs> Shut your dirty fat hole, you, and I give you five minutes to get out of my... You would, are you? You look a bit off colour to me. Thrown out of jail this afternoon and not allowed into my own home this evening, is that it? Because of this bullshit grass... And what, my dear mum? Do you, like, propose for your only begotten pain in the... What's that language, boy? But we can't very well just kick Joe out, <coughs> can we? I mean, we came to an arrangement, oh. didn't we, Joe? I mean, well, you see my meaning, don't you, son? It's you I've got to think of who's been like a mother that I haven't got. Would it be right or fair to go off and leave you to the tender mercies of this young monster who has been like no real son at all? Oh, he's weeping now, but that's his craft and artfulness. Let him go off. 
Let him learn the error of his ways, and that a bad boy like he's been doesn't deserve such a good mum and dad as what he's had. All right. I know how things are now. I've suffered and everybody wants me to go on suffering. Real horror show and thank you all very much. You've made others suffer. It's only right you should suffer as well. Come on in, I'm dying for a cup of tea. I'll make my own way. You won't ever vidy me never no more. Let it lie heavy on your consciences. As for you, you grosny, sanctimonious brachny, I'll... Get in, <laughs> get away from him. What he's got might be cut. <coughs> and there I was, wanting to cry and feeling like death was the only answer. <sighs> In my bag of personal vestures, I had my cutthroat Britfa. But I at once felt very sick as I thought of myself going swish at myself and all my own red, red crobby flowing. Well, 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 well. Heard all about it. Thought you might be hanging round you. Dim. I don't believe it. That the new knight platies? It's like a Ros uniform. Georgi, Pete? Is. Not like. Is. Things have changed a bit, old Droogie. Could pay now with the Millicents. Previous experiences as a villain, a recommendation. <laughs> Ex villains to catch real villains. Like Molodoy Malchicks hanging round premises with intent to do like a felony. Joking, aren't you, Georgi? It's like a bazoomly big shoot, isn't it, Dim? Don't call me Dim like no more, little Doogie. Officer call me. Yeah. Constable call me. <laughs> <laughs> so, little Alex is like cured. Yeah, he was he was read out to us in the station this morning by the super. He said it was a very good way. Read out to you, eh? You still too dim to read for yourself, oh my brother. <laughs> no, not to speak like that. Not no more. Juggy! Go on, do something. I can't. You video, I can't. <laughs> there was never any, like, trust. I was always on my oddy knocky. Grosny, clean, bratchneys. Everything works out. Funny the way it does. You were very, very naughty, Alex boy. Grassing loud and clear about your old drugs. That was two years back. I had to. A court of law. The Pravda, the whole Pravda, and Nietzsche but the. Besides, it's all over now. Not all over, little bratty. Long memories, some has. The law has a long, long, long memory. And a long, long, like, arm. And it's the arm of the law now that doles out a bit of summary. I have no bed. I have only this mattress on the floor. Um, lie down, poor suffering one. <laughs> Another victim? A victim of the modern age? God, God, God. A victim of the police, sir. All the same, police and criminals. Terrorists, freedom fighters, hijackers and liberators. All the same. Look, violence is, is sewn into our fabric. It's all the same. Take off those poor torn clothes and put on this old dressing gown. Uh, then, then you shall eat. Well, not, not that there's much to eat. Poor writer, you know. F. Alexander is the name. Perhaps you've heard of it. Uh, the name Alexander, I know, sir. It's like my own Emia, sir. It, what, 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 what? What's that? Ah. Uh, it is you. Alex... Number one guinea pig of government criminal reform scheme. 
Badness burnt out by Brodsky. Minister of Interior looks with confidence toward a new crime-free era. It is you, a poor victim. Providence bade me pick you up in your blood. The victim, but also a weapon. Weapon? An unquite pony, that, sir. But deprived of choice. A man who cannot choose ceases to be a man. This overbearing evil government to turn a decent young boy into a piece of clockwork. Oh, they, they will do it to us all. Censorship is on its way. My writings are already suspect. Now, since the death of my, uh, my poor wife, I've given my life to fighting the evil that is abroad. And this government tries to stamp out evil with a worse evil. The book I wrote, itself a double victim. The manuscript, torn up by the wretched villains who then tore up my wife. The published book, then banned. Oh, God. What was the book called, sir? It is still called A Clockwork Orange. See, man is a fruit. A creature of juice and colour and perfume. They would tear out his pith and turn him into a robot. Oh, they will try to do it to us all. But you, poor victim, shall be a witness against them. You said something about a wife, sir. Ah, um, she died. She was brutally ravished and beaten. The shock was very great. She always had a weak heart. She, she did not survive a month. <laughs> she was all things to me. She was my body, brain. Her hair was sheaves of autumn. Her smile was midsummer rain. She was all springs to me. The earth renewed every day. The leaves come green in April. Though they fall in the fall and burn, she will not return. Often, in dreams, I hear her. I'm standing near her. She shakes her head. The futility of anger, the sin of vengeance. How can these profit the dead? But if they were here, I'm living still. My living will would seek to break, to rent, to kill. Useless. Useless. As she said, she was all springs to me. The earth renewed every day. The leaves come green in April, though they fall in the fall and burn. She will not return. Of course, uh, today is Wednesday. I'd, I'd forgotten. I, I, I forget everything. My wife was my memory. I, come in. Uh, this is... I, I, I'd forgotten your name. Alex. Good God. How did you get him? You know him? Oh, you mean you, you read... Yes, yes, uh, opportune, I see that. Heavens, yes, I, I, I never so thought... So, for once, I'm uh, meeting us. See, oh, God, his presence sets my brain whirring like clockwork. What a superb device he could be. I mean, he could, for preference, look even earlier and more zombies than he does, but I, I, I doubt we can think of something. What goes on, Bratis? What dost thou and thy Rasudok for thy little drogue have? That manner of voice pricks me. I've, I've heard it before. W once before. Public meetings. Ruined life is the approach. We must inflame all hearts. And what is in this fesch for me, brothers? 
tortured in jail, thrown out by my own P and M and a bolshy brutal like lodger, near killed by the Millicents, and even if I slushy lovely music. What was that, lad? I want to sick up. That's interesting. That's interesting. Oh. I, I read that interview with the defecting Dr. Brown. It was not conditioning. No, 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 no. Over conditioning. There's only one vest I require, and that's to be normal and healthy as I was in the starry days. Having my Malenki bit at 20 to 1 with real droogs and not those Grozny Bretchnies who are like traitors. Can you do that? Can you restore me to what I was? Is what I want to like? No. The party will not be ungrateful, boy. A martyr to the cause of liberty. You have your part to play in the overthrow of this damnable repressive government. Oh! I'm not a thing, brother! I'm not one of your ordinary prestupniks and like criminals! I'm not ordinary and I'm not dim! Just slushy! Dim? Dim? Th that was a name somewhere. Dim? Hey? What's dim to do with it? What do you know about dim? Bog help us! I could almost believe. But such things are impossible. For, by Christ! If he were, I'd tear him, I'd split him. Oh, by God, yes, so I would. There, there, it's all in the past. It was other people altogether. We must help this poor victim. He must help us. Mm -hmm. Look to the future, look to the cause. Let him sleep here. You spend the night in my spare room. Tomorrow we start work, truly, in earnest. Come. Good night, young Alex. When I woke up, I could slushy music coming out of the wall, real grumpy. I slushied for two seconds in, like, interest and joy. But then it all came over me. The start of the pain and the sickness, and I began to groan deep down in my kishkas. Stop it! Stop it! I got onto the sill and I shut my glazies and felt the cold wind on my litso. Goodbye! May Bob forgive you for a ruined Jeezy! Then I jumped. No physiological problems. Orthopedically a success. What concerns us, of course, is the possibility that the physical trauma may have undone Brodsky's conditioning. You want that to happen, Dr. Branham? After all your own work in the Pavlovian Institute? The cause of this boy's near death has been well and accurately publicised. He tried to kill himself to escape from the music of Beethoven. I don't care much for Beethoven myself. Still, that was going too far. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. Branham. How soon can you tell? I think he's already capable of submitting to a few tests. Perhaps later today. And the political angle? What do you mean? Whatever you do, you're caught up in the political angle. The government wanted one thing, now it wants another. But it's still the same government. And the same Minister of the Interior. Or inferior. There are some issues which are bigger than politics. Ah, here he is. Let him sleep. Tell me when he wakes up, nurse. Yes, Dr. Branham. You see the headlines, little double six, double five, three, two, one, as used to be. Boy victim of criminal research scheme. Government as murderer. 
Out, out, out. That means the government. Religion is above politics, so I believe. But now I see how the two can join. It is all a matter of freedom of choice. We have the right to choose evil. Have we? Have we? Can I preach that from any pulpit? Better if I go into retirement and receive the very tempting offer from a distant. <sighs> what gifts, O oh my little sister? Come thou and have a nice lay down with your malenki droog on this bed. <laughs> Doctor! Doctor, he's awake! Alex. Now, this won't take long. I'm going to show you some pictures. While you're looking at one, say exactly what comes into your mind. All right? Righty, righty, right. This first one. It's a bird's nest, full of eggs. Very, very nice. Real horror show. And what would you like to do about it? Smash them. Pick up the lot and, like, smash them against a wall or a cliff and then video them all smash up. Real horror show. Hmm. This picture is of a peacock. You've seen them, haven't you? Look at its lovely tail, spread out in a beautiful fan. I would like to pull out, like, all those feathers in its tail and slushy it creech blue murder for being so, like, boastful. And this lovely young girl? <laughs> Give her the old in-out, in-out, real savage, with lots of ultra-violence. <laughs> and the scene of looting and killing in East London. I'd like to put the boots straight in everybody's litso and fiddy the old red, red, crovy spurting out. Good. And this rather holy picture? The old nagoy droog of the prison, Charlie, carrying his cross up a hill. I'd like to hammer in the old nails. Bang, bang! Bang! Two for his rookers, one for his nogas, and one for luck in the gulliver. I think that's <laughs> enough. You seem to be cured. Cured? Me tied down to this bed and you say cured? Kiss my sharries is what I govern it like in reply. Doctor. Already? The Minister of the Inferior in Poison. Well, 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 well. What giveth then, old droogy? Speak more respectfully, boy, when addressing a Minister of the Crown. Yarbles. Bullshit great yarblockos to thee and thine. It's all right, all right. He speaks to me as a friend, don't you, son? I am everybody's friend, except to my enemies. And who are your enemies? Tell us that, my boy. All who do me wrong are my enemies. <laughs> well, I and the government of which I am a member want, want you to regard us as friends. Yes, friends. We have put you right, yes? Uh, you're getting the best of treatment. We never wished you harm, but there, but there are some who did and do. And I think you know who those are. They wish to use you for base political ends. They would have been glad to see you dead for those ends and then blame it on the government. I, I think you know who those men are. There is a man named F. Alexander, a writer of subversive literature, who has been howling for your blood. He has been mad with desire to stick a knife in you. But you're safe from him now. We had him put away. He was supposed to be like a droog. Like a droog, he was supposed to be. He believed you had done the most bitter wrong to someone near his heart. You mean that he was, like, told? He had this idea. He was a menace. So we, uh, we put him away. Kind. Most kind of thou. When you leave here, you will have no worries. We shall see to everything, because you are helping us. Am I? Well, we always help our friends, don't we? Good boy. Good, good boy. And now, see, a present. What shall it be? Mozart? Benji Britt? Schoenberg? Karloff? The ninth. 
the glorious ninth. Also, already in. Sign here. What do you see? I can vidy myself very clear, running and running on like very light and mysterious nogas, carving the whole litso of the creature world with my cutthroat britva. You're cured, all right. Yeah, cured, all right. There was me, your humble narrator, and my three droogs, that is Len, Rick, and Bully. We were sitting in the Corova milk bar, making up our Rasudox what to do with the evening. A flip, dark, chill, winter bastard though dry. What's it going to be there, eh? What's it going to be there, eh? Tall Chucky, Tratsy, and kicks in the yard blockers. Thumps on the deliver. Fists in a plot. Grunky great shoes. To the bratified Millicent. They deep the crobby. Pour out of his rot. It's as a genus, a starry babushkas, a crack in the kishkas, will on a show hot. Give it them, whether they want it or not. Well then, Drugi, thou being the oldest and like the leader, what dost thou in mind for this Kolodny winter notchy like ham? Look, Drugis, tonight I am somehow just not in like the mood. I know not why or how it is, but there it is. You three go your own ways this night wise, leaving me out, out, and out. On my oddy knocky. Tomorrow, we shall meet same place, same time, me hoping to be like a lot better. Right? Righty, right? Oh, too tough a day, like, is that it? Yeah. In the old music archives, gloopy sort of naz. <laughs> Polly's horror show. Yeah? Pretty Polly grows on trees, old droogie. Only a bazoomy shoot does rabbiting for it. Yeah. Horror show right. If you won't itty with us, right sorry I am. You're not sorry, bully bratty. I viddy the old look in your glazzy. Power, power and power. Well, take it. Heil Tavarish. Itty off and out, and the very best of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. We were a bit rushed in the shop. No need for sorrow? Glad to see you, Marty, and very glad. Sit. What will it be? The old Monaco? Oh, you do talk funny sometimes. You mean milk? Vaccine secretion. Cow juice. Did you think on what I said? We're both too young. Me 17, you 18. Not too, Molodoy. Sorry. At least think. I mean, it's you and me together, right? <laughs> right, if you like. Not so young, though. Me. Not so young as I was. Old Wolfgang Amadeus had done a lot at my age. Felix M too, and Benji Britt. Not so young. Old enough to know that being young is like being an animal. No. It's more like being one of those malenky toys you vidi being sold in the street. Made out of tin with a spring inside and a handle, and you wind it up, grr, 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 and off it itties in a straight line and bangs straight into things. Bang, bang, and doesn't pony what it's doing. That's being young. And the ultra-violence and the fillying and the crasting. That's being young, too. I'm growing up. I look to the future and a son of my own who will make the same mistakes as I did just because he'll be young. You still talk funny. And you're jumping ahead a bit, aren't you? Life's not very long. Think about it. I'll think. 
I was doing this job in the state music archives today, and I was cataloguing the ten new recordings of the ninth. And words kept on itching through my Gulliver. <laughs> There you go again. You want a slushy? Here, that is. All right. Being young's a sort of sickness. Measles, mumps, or chickenpox. Gather all your toys together. Lock them in an iron box. That means tall chocks, crasting and dratsing, all of the things that suit a boy. When you build instead of busting, you can start your ode to joy. <laughs> <laughs> Do not be a clockwork orange. Freedom has a lovely voice. Here is good and there is evil. Those cons both and take your choice. Sweet in juice and blue and aroma. Let's not be changed to fruit machines. Choices be but seldom easy. That's what human freedom means. Sweet in juice and blue and aroma. Let's not be changed to fruit machines. Choices be but seldom. That's how it's going to be, brothers, as we come to the end of this like tale. You've been everywhere with your little droog, Alex, suffering with him, and you have vidied some of the most grasny brachnies old bog ever made, all onto your old droog, Alex. And all it was was that I was young. I am not young, not no longer. Ah, no. Alex, like groweth up. Ah, yes. Tomorrow is all like sweet flowers, and the turning vonny earth like a juicy orange in the gigantic rookers of bog. And there's the stars and the old lunar up there, and your old droog Alex growing up. A terrible grasny vonny world, really, brothers and sisters. And so farewell from your little droog. And to all others in this story, except one, and you've just met her, profound shoons of lip music, <laughs> and they can kiss my sharies. But you remember sometimes thy little Alex that was, Amen, and all that cow. Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess starred Jason Hughes as Alex. Struan Roger was Doctor Brodsky, John McArdle was the chaplain, and Jack Davenport the minister. Bill Stewart was Alexander, Dorian Thomas was Mister Deltoid, and Claire Isaac was Doctor Branham. The Drugs were played by Rodri Hugh as Dim, Robert Harper as Pete, and Wayne Forrester as Georgie. Alex's mother was Jennifer Hill. And Marty was Amy Thomas. Other parts were played by members of the cast. Original music was composed and conducted by John Hardy and recorded by Stuart Lucas. Technical presentation was by Nigel Lewis, Gareth Tyrrell, and Mark Harrison, and the production assistant was Catherine Lewis. A Clockwork Orange was directed and produced in Wales by Alison Hindle. <laughs>